This keyboard is something that speed players in Osu tried to hide from the general public because of one special function it has. That was until this tweet came out. And well, now it's a pretty known and popular thing that a lot of Osu players know about. Why is it really that good? What exactly is this thing? Let's find out. Hello everybody, let's talk about the Wu-Ting 60 HE. I actually didn't know about it until Zechi showed me that tweet and I got curious enough to try my luck and ask Wu-Ting for one. And they actually sent me one, so yeah. I got this unit for free, but I'm not being paid to review this keyboard. The Wu-Ting 60 HE is currently on pre-order for 176 US dollars. That is quite the pricey keyboard. Though the thing to note is that that tweet specifically was talking about Wu-Ting's HE keyboards. So you don't need a 60 HE for it, but I'm, I'm reviewing this thing. As long as you have one of Wu-Ting's HE keyboards, which is the full-size version or the 60 version, it will work. But first, I'll just give you guys a TLDR of what I think about this keyboard and it's... This is the best stock sounding gaming keyboard I've ever touched or heard. But I can hear the switches pinging pretty badly. It seems that in general, gaming keyboards are heading in the direction of better quality parts, build and sound, like the Double Shop PBT keycaps. Since these are PBT, they won't shine as quickly as the typical ABS keycaps that gaming keyboards used to usually have. And yeah, this keyboard is following the Double Shop PBT trend that gaming keyboards are just generally following right now. Though a thing to note is that PBT Double Shop can be a little rough to the touch. It's something that some people might not like and some people might like me. And well, because these are PBT Double Shot keycaps, you can see that the legends of characters where they need to connect like an O or Q have a darker bit to it, like a spot due to the way that they're made. The keyboard stabilizers sounded pretty good for stock. And that's because they're already factory lubed. They're not perfect by any means, pretty far fine actually, but the average gamer who isn't into custom keyboards are going to be impressed by these and going to love them. And well, the other reason why it sounds good is because it comes with case foam and plate foam in it already. And the biggest thing that's contributing to the nice sound profile of this keyboard is the fact that it's not a floating key switch keyboard. Thank god, I hate how floating key switch looks like. It's just bad. And in general, the moment you see a keyboard have like a bezel like this from the side, it'll sound better. The switches in these are Wu Ting's own lacquer switches that sit at 40 to 60 grams. The weight starts at 40 grams at the top and then goes down to 60 grams as you reach the bottom out. And since these are hall effect switches, there's no contact leaves inside of them. The combination of these two is what makes the switches feel pretty nice to type on, especially if you're a fan of Linus. They are also hot swap, though there aren't any switches you're going to be able to swap these out with, so it doesn't really matter, but it makes lubing switches a lot easier if you're going to be doing that. The LEDs are surprisingly bright and they look good. The aluminium white plate is really helping the LEDs diffuse under the keycaps, like just a plane of colour. I really like it when keyboards do this and pull it off. I'm a gamer, I like LEDs, but overall I was shocked when I took this keyboard out of the box. I was not expecting a nice keyboard in a custom keyboard sense. Because look, I just asked for a gaming keyboard because I wanted to test haha Osu cheater keyboard and I did not expect to get this in the mail. It actually sounds really good when you like fix the spring ping by like lubing it up and fixing the stabilizers. Like just hear it. <laughs> Right, so the next thing I did was take the keyboard part. They totally did this on purpose, didn't they? Otherwise, this is actually a pretty creative way to silk screen a PCB. The stabilizers are clip-ins and it looks like the stems aren't clipped. So you have to do it yourself if you're modding this. And like I said earlier, since I came to this keyboard completely blind, I actually didn't know this was using Hall Effect switches. I thought it was an optical board like Wu Ting's previous keyboards. So when I took out the switches and looked at the PCB, I was confused to why there weren't the usual optical sensors on the PCB. And I also thought it was pretty curious to have a piece of metal at the bottom of the switch stems. But then I realized that's not metal. They're magnets. Fascinating. And it's where Hall Effect sensors come in. 
On the other side of the PCB, each key has a Hall effect sensor right at where the magnet of the stem would sit. Hall effect sensors are sensors that can detect the presence and the magnitude of a magnetic field, which is how these sensors here are able to measure the distance and position of a magnet, which in this case is the switch stem. And so that's how the analog functionality in this keyboard works. That's really clever. <laughs> So I'm not really sure why they rated their switches for like 100 million clicks lifespan on their website when this kind of technology is basically indestructible. I mean, hall sensors are used in places like aerospace, underwater devices, and the military. Speaking of the PCB, I was eyeballing it trying to understand what they were doing and oh my god, that's a lot of years. But wait a second, this is a 4 layer PCB. Ha! Huh. Most keyboards only use 2 layers. Is that why this keyboard is so expensive? Alongside their own liquor switches. Though don't quote me on this. Mass producing a 4 layer PCB might actually just bring the price per PCB down to as close as a 2 layer one. But man, there's a lot of components on my board. But okay, okay. Basically what I'm saying is, the engineering behind this keyboard is actually pretty cool. Good work, Wu Ting. The driver software. The utility is pretty easy and simple to use. Unlike other keyboard companies out there, they actually have a web-based version of the driver that has the same functionalities, which is really convenient. And anything changed on the software is saved directly to the keyboard itself. And inside the software, here you can change the LED modes, remap keys, and other stuff that gaming keyboards usually have. And then they have the usual thing that's available on pretty much every analog keyboard, which would be customizing the actuation distance. You can set multiple profiles for the keyboard from the sidebar on the left, which is pretty useful if you're the sort that needs a lot of configurations, but I don't think a lot of people would be using this that much. I'm not the kind of person that has like 10 different settings on my keyboard anyway. On default, the keyboard has one digital profile and three analog ones. What's the difference? Well, here's the thing that only Wooting keyboards are able to do. So normally, for a lot of analog keyboards out there, they can sense an analog input. It's in their name. So they can sense how far you're pressing in on one key. But the thing is, they only output digitally. Basically, the keyboard is only able to tell your computer if the key is pressed or not. But for Wooting keyboards, they are able to sense an analog input and output analog as well. So you can set a range of inputs per key on the keyboard. And you can also adjust the curve sensitivity of those inputs in the software itself to fine tune it to your preferences. And that's what their analog profile is able to do. You can set gamepad functions on them. The default digital profile is only able to output in a digital yes or no. I actually really appreciate the function keys tab it has in the software because it has a mod tab function. Though technically, this isn't anything new. Like, you don't need an analog keyboard to be able to do this because if you have a custom keyboard that runs QMK, QMK has already been able to do this for like a long time. But this is the first consumer gamer product I've seen that has incorporated this function into their software itself. And it's made using this keyboard during testing so much easier on me. Basically, mod tab is assigning two different keys to one single key. For me, I use my caps lock as my left control key. It sounds weird, but it's it's actually quite comfortable. So usually what I do on keyboards that doesn't have mod tab is swap the caps lock and control. But then pressing caps lock becomes a pain because let's be real, left control is in a really awkward position on keyboards. And so this is where I use mod tab. When I tap my caps lock key, it outputs caps lock. But then when I hold down my caps lock key, it does control. So I could actually daily drive this keyboard and not just use it only when I'm gaming because it actually does this configuration. And yeah, I absolutely refuse to use any keyboard that isn't able to do this. The only exception is the Happy Hacking keyboard. Other functions you can set are the dynamic keystrokes and toggle keys. Dynamic keystroke allows you to set four different outputs at four different key position on one key. Basically, what this means is that on one key, you can output something when you press it 0.1mm down, and then it output something else when you press it completely down, and then output another thing as you are about to release it, and then output another thing when you completely release it. How it looks like in action is like this really cursed way of playing Osumania at one key. But a more practical use for it would be like if I wanted to set W to walk in a game and then set the deepest actuation point to hold down shift and W at the same time so I'd be running. You could technically use this to hold shift for you when you play catch the beat as well. But I tried and it doesn't really work very well due to how catch the beat works. The toggle key lets you keep a key pressed down by pressing it once and then releasing set key by pressing it again. But you can also hold down the key and use it like a regular held down key. I guess an example situation for this would be you're holding down crouch in like shooter games. And that's it for the function keys tab. In the performance tab, there's the typical actuation point setting and there's this thing called touch on mode. Touch on mode is basically just lowering the debounce mode. So if you're gaming seriously, I recommend you turn on touch on mode. Don't note that the RGB effects are disabled when you turn this on. The keyboard will only be in a static color. 
And then here, the best for last. The thing that everyone is raving about. Rapid trigger. I actually can't believe nobody has thought this up in analog keyboards until Wu Ting did it. But then again, I didn't think of it either. This is actually really clever. Basically, rapid trigger is a function that sets your actuation point to anything. Like, it changes the actuation point on a key based on whether you're pressing the key or releasing it. So in all gaming keyboards, in order to be as quick as possible, they set the actuation point to as high as possible. Like, you know, you even have switches trying to do that, like the Cherry MX Solus and stuff, the speeds. So the actuation is right at the top of the switch, which in turn makes the keyboard extra fast because it responds quicker to your key presses. But the one drawback to this is that in order to actuate the same key again, you have to make sure that you move your finger completely all the way up before you can press it down again. But Rapid Trigger changes that. Now, the moment you release at any point of the switch, the moment you change directions and press downwards again, that's your actuation point. The actuation point is now literally at any point of the switch. This means that releasing a key is faster. You don't need to go all the way up to release a key anymore. I guess this kind of thing can help in shooter games, where if you need to stop immediately so that your crosshair can like tighten up and you don't need to worry about spread. But I don't replay shooters. But I think you guys already know where this is going to go in rhythm games. Okay, so just a warning, I'm not a top player, and in general, you shouldn't take a reviewer's word as gospel, because basically... Holy shit. If you can play up to 6 stars in any given game mode except for Catch the Beat, I don't really know about Catch the Beat, you can feel the difference. I mean, even if you don't feel the difference like immediately, you will feel it if you try to find it. This is not placeable. It's real. <laughs> this is something you can actually feel and utilize, unlike something like 8000 Hz. Alright, so there's three things when it comes to playing on the keyboard with Rapid Trigger. One. This keyboard is incredibly sensitive, and based on how much you want to squeeze Rapid Trigger into your gameplay, it's going to take some time to get used to. It feels like the first time I got a mechanical keyboard and was accidentally actuating keys, except this time I'm accidentally double pressing them. You're going to be hitting a lot of earlies at the start. Also, if you set the Rapid Trigger to something incredibly sensitive, if you accidentally like slip your finger or accidentally like jitter or something, it will hold and release again. Like, you'll slide a break. You're also going to need a lot more finger control on this keyboard in general when you start trying it out for something like uh, Mania. Because it's going to be like, oh no, I'm hitting on both sides of the hit error. Two, Rapid Trigger will only show benefits to you if you're playing two Rapid Trigger. Which means, if you're the sort of person who has a playstyle where you completely raise your fingers before pressing down, this keyboard is essentially going to be the same as any other keyboard to you, so you're not going to need Rapid Trigger at all. Basically, this keyboard works with anything where you can get away with keeping your fingers at a bottom or at a midway point through the switch and moving it slightly for speed. Basically, Vibro. Except let's be real, Vibro doesn't really have much place in a lot of charts. I can't really say much about Mania or 4 key games. I'm just not good enough and I don't know enough to be able to tell. What I know is that if you're a noob like me and in a clutch with some dense pattern, you can just cheese it with Rapid Trigger. <laughs> it's definitely not a good idea to 100% learn to play without lifting up your fingers completely because finger control goes to shit and your accuracy would be just god awful. It's a bad habit. But for also standard, there is one thing I can say about this keyboard. It is absolutely jacked for single tapping. And I can also see this thing being used to cheese out the very last bit of stamina on streams. And the streams don't necessarily have to be high BPM. How I see it is that once you get used to using this, you will notice other keyboards lack of rapid trigger. But of course, that leads me to my last point. 3. No, this keyboard is not going to instantly propel you into the top 50. Because as you can see, I still suck at the game. <laughs> this thing will only benefit you if you're already much better than the average Osu player. Like I said in my beginner Osu video, having good equipment only increases your skill cap. It doesn't necessarily increase your current skill. It just makes you be more able to reach higher heights. 
And hell, it will not benefit you at all if all you play are short PP jump maps like Harumachi Clover. And I wouldn't even be surprised if some players get this keyboard and use it for ages and not even feel the difference between Rapid Trigger and any other keyboard at all because of how they play. In fact, it might even be a terrible idea to use this keyboard because it's kind of like a double-edged sword in terms of the sensitivity and the completely different kind of muscle memory you need to play with this keyboard. Like for Mania's case, where my friend actively played worse on Mania because because accuracy would just go to shit, except for dense patterns or patterns that we just normally can't do. I'm really not sure how it works on Osu with finger control because I am not a finger control player and it might not matter that much for Osu in the first place because the amount of control you need is nowhere as technical as something like Mania. And also for Mina, it messed with long note charts because the thing about this keyboard is that it releases earlier now because of rapid trigger, which makes it even harder to release on time. Okay, now for the things I don't like. This is always one. It's 60%. Pretty sure this thing would be way more popular if they made a 75% or like a 10 keyless version. I mean, I know there's a full size version, but like that takes up too much space on my desk. And I'm pretty sure this is what everyone else is thinking. There is also another reason why I don't like the full size version. And that's because the full size version uses floating key switch. And it also sounds a lot worse. <laughs> And I also think everyone can agree that the strap on this side of this thing is like really pointless. I mean, I think the point of it is to show off to people that you have a Wu-Ting 60HE keyboard. But you know what I think would make more people use it? Making a transparent version of the strap where you can put any design you want printed on a piece of paper inside of it. I'm pretty sure a ton of weebs out there would love to put their like waifus on their keyboard. But yeah, that's pretty much about all my negative comments about this board. All of these aren't really a big deal to me. But I can see one or two of these being a huge deal breaker to some of you guys watching this video. So, the conclusion. This is a pretty nice keyboard in terms of build, but in play, it's a little mixed. I can see why someone tried to keep this under wraps because Rapid Trigger does help with certain skill sets. But at the same time, it's also a challenge to use. Rapid Trigger takes away a consistent actuation point. And in a way, that can be a bad thing because consistency is everything for running games and muscle memory. I mean, it could be something you could adapt to and learn in time, but I get the feeling that it'll end up feeling like playing with any other keyboard because now you're extremely conscious of whether you're lifting your fingers or pressing them down just so that you can play like before without actuating something early. Except for those rare moments where you do end up using Rapid Trigger to cheese out something you normally can't do, like in terms of speed or stamina. Though for stamina's case, I think this keyboard is actually a little bit too on the heavy side for Osu Standard because I found myself getting tired quicker than I normally would on something like Cherry MX Reds. Though you could get lighter springs for the keyboard, it's just that you have to pay extra and modify the keyboard yourself. So in the end, this is a keyboard that helps for that very last bit of advantage in those rare edge case scenarios. It's not as big as a complete hack or cheat like some people originally implied it to be when the info first came out. But the whole only for each cases thing is honestly what is to be expected from competitive gamer equipment. For when you're already one of the best and going against, well, the rest of the best. But still, do I recommend this keyboard? Well, yes actually. It is a solid gaming keyboard overall. And if you don't like Rapid Trigger or you play worse with it, you can just turn it off. But due to the price point of this keyboard, I don't think it's a diehard must-buy for people. I don't really recommend you get this if you're a huge fan of innovative technology or wooting, or if you're just that curious about Rapid Trigger and you have the extra money to spend on it. Or for the very last case, you're the kind of person who is currently running a very terrible keyboard and you're looking for something worthwhile to upgrade to and to stick to forever. But just as a warning, I haven't used this keyboard long enough to be able to tell any long-term consequences of using Rapid Trigger, and I personally feel that I just don't know enough to be able to say every small detail about it. So I recommend watching other people's reviews. I think Zeshi is going to put out a review for his full-size version soon enough. He'll probably talk about Standard and Taiko as well. And there's also Spaza's review, which I hope is coming out too. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much, Rooting, for sending me this really nice keyboard, and I hope you guys enjoy. See you guys next time.